I like to ask people, <laughs> what did you learn about yourself from your past marriage? Um, I learned that, um, first of all, it's, it's impossible to have healthy love without the Lord. Like, I feel like it is impossible to have a healthy love without it being rooted and grounded, grounded in Christ. Um, I learned that I am, I can be manipulative. I can be passive aggressive. I can, um, I can be defensive all the things like Hold you on. learn. I want people to hear this because see a lot of men, y'all don't think women can be accountable. Now look at this. I oh. know you heard that on social media, like women can never be accountable. Oh, mouthy, disrespectful, all of the things. You said manipulative. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in a relationship? Um, I think I'm, I'm really good with my words. So like the thing that you're gifted in, I feel like is the very thing the enemy tries to attack, will attack you in and he'll, mm -hmm. so the very thing that God wants to use you for, for his glory and for his kingdom is the very thing that the enemy wants to use you for, for his, his agenda and, and plan. And so, um, when my heart is far from the Lord, I can be manipulative in my, um, in my, in conflict and, and, and trying to be defensive and trying to get you to come to what I want you to come to. Every second that escapes without you here with me Keeps my heart anticipating till I finally see you When I made my vows, I told God that I was going to take care of this gift All my life I've been waiting for you Girl, you know I've been praying for you been writing these love letters to you. So I fight for that future in the present. Good, you know what I'm saying? That was good, Congratulations to the ones who found love for the hope and new beginnings from heaven above. I await my future wifey. I pray that it won't be too long. Too long. Welcome to a Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. And go ahead and hit that like button so this video can be recommended to other people that may be perusing on YouTube. And while you're at it, go ahead and sign up for the mailing list. There's a link in the description. You know, season eight has been very intentional on the guests that I've chosen for the podcast, as with every season. But this season is about love. It's about uh, sharing hope. Uh, a lot of people who have DM me have said that they have been they felt hopeless on this journey of love and they feel like they don't have their purpose partner out there and they've their hearts have been mismanaged. They've gone through divorces and they just kind of feel like, you know, God just may not have uh, love intended for them. And so I like speaking to people that can speak life into your situation. And today I have a very, very special guest. I've been watching her on her journey. She's been unapologetically transparent and vulnerable. And that's what I love most. Y'all know the moniker of the podcast is we keep it lit. We live intentionally and transparently. And this guest is the epitome of that. Without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Megan Ashley. Okay. Brooks, I might as well say that. <laughs> how you doing, Megan Ashley? Good. How are you? Just can I call you by your all your names? Yes, you can call me all the names, all of them. <laughs> so, Megan, how how do you feel? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Happy to be here. I woke up pretty early. So. Yeah. How early did you have to get up to come on to Dallas? So I didn't go to. I went to bed at like one thirty, and then woke up at four. Four. Or like three thirty. And your flight was at what time? We left. We flew out at six forty-five. Oh yeah, yeah. But I live an hour away from the airport, so I had to be oh, up early. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah. you're in here. We're here. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Megan, have you ever have you heard of the Dear Future Wifey podcast? Yes, of course. What, what what have you known about it before we go deep dive into your story? So I just have seen a few episodes with some guests that I love, like right. the Pittman yes. and. Um, Kev on stage and his wife and um, the one ep my favorite episode obviously is the one where, <laughs> when, <laughs> where Whitney Wig fell off yes so if that, that was you would you allow me to post that absolutely you would have let me just post your hair your I wig. mean 
The way that she handled it, yes, because it was too funny. It was the nigga for me. I was like, yes, that <laughs> nigga. She was like, nigga. I was I, like, that I, was just the best. Let me tell you something. I slid all the way out uh, this yeah, chair. You I, understand me? <laughs> Man, because I didn't know whether to laugh or what. I was like looking at her. I was like, I know she embarrassed. It was watching it slide yeah. back. It was the slide But see, back. I didn't know that was a wig. I thought that was I her natural he- hair. I didn't either. And she she said that, you know, the crazy thing about it was that she had told people who had DM'd her. Well, she didn't tell them that. She just <laughs> accepted them saying, girl, I, I love that you wear your natural hair. She's like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, that's hilarious. So, and then so, to watch it, it's like, that's crazy. I was gone. That was that was one of my favorites. So yeah, I know I know um, a little bit about your journey and how you started, started this podcast to kind of, you know, prepare your heart and prepare yourself for, you know, love again. I think that that's dope. Man, when I tell you that was the most uh, vulnerable task that God beset before me. He was yeah. like, listen, I want you to do this. And I was like, and you and I had this conversation when he told me to do the podcast. I was like, well, God, you know, I think that every episode I'm supposed to be able to say, and here's five steps to getting closer mm-hmm. to this. And here's three steps of getting healed and all that. I said, but God, I don't know the answer to all that. Yeah. And God said, I know, just just, just do what you do yeah. and take people on the journey. I said, people be interested in me trying to figure it out. He said, absolutely. You and I had a conversation about how when the last podcast you were a part of, it ended, mm-hmm. uh, you was like, you was about to just slide off and fade off into oblivion. Yeah. And then God said what? What, what? what did God say to you? You know what? He, it's not what he said is what he didn't say so much. You know what I mean? I, my mom always told me, she was like, you know, if you don't know what to do next, do the last thing God told you to do. And so if he hasn't given you anything new to do, just obey the last thing he told you to do until he says something new. And so wow, um, I, I prayed and, you know, a, approached God often about what, what, what am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? And am I supposed to continue? Am I not? And he, that was very clear, like, do what I told you to do. The last thing I told you to do, and it was to share my journey and be transparent. So, how'd you feel going from having a a, a co host and then doing a solo? I hated it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. So, I mean, I, I need to stop. I need to watch my words. I don't hate it, but it's, it's a challenge. It's very uncomfortable. It's, it is. It's very uncomfortable, and it's a challenge for me um, because I never, you know, imagined a life where I would be doing this on my own you know I just never imagined that right and so um to be thrusted into something like that it was just something that I wasn't expecting how's your healing journey been going since that I mean because you experienced a a loss of a best friend a loss of a podcast that you're working on a loss of a husband all Mm -hmm. around the same time you know within the one year span or what yeah how 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 did you reconcile that um, I think that <laughs> knowing that God is sovereign and he's like not caught off guard by anything that he knows everything and, and knows the days ahead of me. And you know what I mean? So I just, I think I found comfort and safety knowing that God wasn't caught off guard by anything. And yet he still loves me yeah. and yet he still has called me and yet he still has, you know, ordained me to do something specific in this time. And so I think graveling with the fact that the Lord actually loves me has been the the biggest part of healing from all of those things, you know, is knowing that God loves me. That was like my biggest thing. Was that, that something that you wrestled with growing up with God's love? Yeah, I think I I don't think I really, you know, I don't think I ever really like came to terms with the fact that God loved me because the enemy was so after my thoughts in the opposite and making and causing me to feel unworthy because, you know, my dad wasn't in my life the way he should have been. And so when your father you know, that's your, that's the foundation of how you kind of receive love, whether he's present or not. Like the, that role and that position in your life, um, it matters. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, me and my dad have a great relationship now, but um, he's human and his humanity affected my humanity. Yeah. And, um, and it was hard for me to know that I was actually worthy of being loved. Um, and I didn't come to that realization until last year. 
So. Were y'all able to have since then? Has you and your biological father reconciled it? Oh yeah. Okay. We're, we're really. I mean, me and my parents are so close. Like I'm really close to my parents, and I'm so thankful for that. But I mean, it took hard conversations. Yeah. You know, me and my dad are very similar. We are hot headed people. You know, Megan, you hot headed. I, I, I can't. I can't see that in you. You seem so meek and mild. The and- Lord does a work. <laughs> Okay, that's how you know the Lord is real. I'm just saying the Lord is really real. He is real because I am mm, a heathen. So you talking about when you was when you was growing up, you was like that in high oh, school. How are you you wasn't yeah. the, you wasn't the one fighting nobody, was no, you? No, but I just had a mouth. You know, just you talk too much. You just talk too much. Shut up. <laughs> You're mouthy. Were you like that in your past marriage? Yes. And, and That's so, Megan without the Lord. Mouthy. <laughs> I'm just mouthy. You talk too much. The M stand for mouthy. Mouthy. Just you talk too much. And so even in your past marriage, when that was an issue that your your ex husband called you out on that, say, oh Man, yeah, and I it, mean yeah, it, he it, didn't shy away from calling me out on anything. <laughs> That's probably why we're in the situation we're in now. It's like he called me out all the time. I like to ask people, <laughs> what did you learn about yourself from your past marriage? Um, I learned that. Um, first of all, it's, it's impossible to have healthy love without the Lord. Like, I feel like it is impossible to have a healthy love without it being rooted and grounded, grounded in Christ. Um, I learned that I am, I can be manipulative. I can be passive aggressive. I can, um, I can be defensive all the things like Hold you on. learn. I want people to hear this because see a lot of men, y'all don't think women can be accountable. Now look at this. I oh. know you heard that on social media, like women can never be accountable. Oh, mouthy, disrespectful, all of the things. You said manipulative. Mm-hmm. What does that look like in a relationship? Um, I think I'm, I'm really good with my words. So like the thing that you're gifted in, I feel like is the very thing the enemy tries to attack, will attack you in and he'll, so the very thing that God wants to use you for, for his glory and for his kingdom is the very thing that the enemy wants to use you for, for his, his agenda and, and plan. And so, um, when my heart is far from the Lord, I can be manipulative in my, um, in my, in conflict and, in, and, in, in trying to be defensive and trying to get you to come to what I want you to come to, you know what I mean? So how, how did you come to this? Well, probably therapy, huh? Therapy is helpful, but I always, I mean, it's like, you know yourself. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, truthfully, like, you know, you, you can, <laughs> but sometimes if you, need, you may not be aware. You, you, that, may, you may be like, you lie to yourself so much that you believe that, but you know, you also lying to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to keep it a buck. You lie, you lying to yourself. You know that you're. You know that you're mouthy. You know you're moody. You know that you're manipulative. You know that. Now, you can try to make excuses as to why, yeah. right? But it's like you are, you know. You try to you try to blame shift and say, well, if you wasn't like this, then I wouldn't yeah, have to do this. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, you have to take accountability for your role. You know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of how, what caused it or whatever, like, you have to take accountability for your role. You know what I'm saying? But when did it get, how long did it take or what year did you come to this knowledge of yourself to last be able to articulate year, it? So last year. I you, told you, that's when everything hit, like everything. I mean, and like I said, I've always known like, okay, man, you're being, <laughs> you're being manipulative. Stop. Like I would be in the middle of an argument and be like, all right, now you're taking it too far. <laughs> it's like, just give it up. <laughs> but, 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 ha- but here's the thing. It's, it's knowing it's, it's, God brought me to a place of humility. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think that we are so prideful that we don't want to admit that this is an issue and I need to get it fixed or I need to, you know, be honest about why I'm doing these things or yeah. whatever. Um, so it's just a pride thing. It's just like you're prideful. You're prideful. Is there a way of avoiding heartbreak? You said stay single. Well, is that statement true if you sincerely desire marriage? That actually would mean you'll be breaking your own heart. You can imagine how many DMs or emails or comments I receive with people asking me matters of the heart. Well, I'm excited to announce that on Monday, April the 15th, we'll be going live for a free event in celebration of our four year anniversary of the beloved Dear Future Wifey podcast. We're gonna be hearing from past guests and I have a big announcement that's gonna be truly life changing. 
So I want you to register today at identifyyou.com. That's I-D-E-N-T-I, find, F-I-N-D, the letter U, dot com. Identifyyou.com. Can't wait to see you there. Was it a a moment where you were just sitting in your, your room or sitting at home where you were in worship or just crying before God because all this stuff started crashing down mm -hmm. and you had that come to Jesus moment or did it come in stages? You were in church and you heard a no, sermon. Or I think, I mean, it did come in stages, but I think like the moment that I, I was in so much pain, just like pain, like sad, right? Like yeah. my marriage is over. You know, my friendship situation was really, really bad and rocky. And um, and so I think that I came to a point like when I was in that much pain where my heart was aching so bad from that, I came to a point where like I committed myself to him fully. And then that's why the podcast is called In Totality, because God was requiring my life in totality, not just parts of my life. And I realized through taking inventory um, and being aware and, and acknowledging what you know what my life had come to um i realized that i had given him so many parts of me but never had i given him all of me in totality and so um that was a moment where i knew i have to commit my life to him fully without any not leaving any part out fully he can have my life fully um and then it and then it grows in stages, right? Like the more I started reading my word, the more I started praying, the more I started dedicating significant time to him, the more I started to include him in everything, the more that that commitment stays, you know, stronger. And it's an everyday thing. Like I have to do this every day. Every day. You know, like commit every day. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you the elephant in the room, uh, the question of what happened in that relationship and your friendship. To be honest, um, I just think that people you grow, you know, and, and I I don't I don't know if it's one specific thing. Um, I think that you just grow and you realize, you know, maybe this this doesn't serve me anymore on both sides. And so, um, you know, you just want the best for people and then you just kind of move on for whatever God has for your life and you bless, you know whatever they got going on, you just bless them and you move on. How did that feel though from a, cause oh, like, it's painful. It yeah, sucks. It felt like a death. Oh, huh? it is. It absolutely does. I mean, it still feels like a death. You know, it sucks. It's not easy. Is there um, times where something happened, you want to pick up the phone and call your best friend. You'd be like, no, that, that don't, mm -hmm. you pass that stage. Yeah, no, there, there's none of that, but there is, you know, it's grief, you know, and there's stages that come in grief. There probably was a time where I wanted to do that. Um, I'm not at that place right now, um, but, you know, it's grief. You go through it. You go through the stages of it. But I think more than I think I think more than my attention being on those things, my attention is on the Lord. My attention isn't on those things anymore of how I feel like making it all about me, how I feel, what this felt like, what they did to me, what. It's just like my focus is on the Lord. Let me ask you this because sometimes it sounds like we over spiritualize real emotions. Mm -hmm. When you say my attention is on the Lord, but this is a real loss you lost from a friendship. Mm -hmm. This is a loss you lost from a husband. Now yeah. you're in a co parenting situation. Yeah. Holidays come up. You got to negotiate where the kids go, all that type of stuff. Um, how do you process that real stuff? Because sometimes as Christians, we can over spiritualize and people are going through stuff right now and they're mm -hmm. like I'm trying to put my attention on the Lord but I'm physically hurting right now because I'm mourning the loss yeah. of this man or woman that used to lay beside me mm -hmm. in the bed mm -hmm. like like I'm mourning the loss of that my yeah. kids are saying is daddy coming home yeah. my I'm feeling like am I going to ever get married again yeah. whatever these questions are and, and then people be like well Jesus is my husband well truth be told people don't really want Jesus to be their husband yeah I mean <laughs> Okay. So <laughs> That's what y'all want. I mean, I think I think I think that it's okay to acknowledge and be aware of what you feel. Facts. Right? But I do believe that feelings are temporary. I really do believe that. And I do believe that when we stop and pause, right? Sila. Pause mm -hmm. and consider and ponder on what God says. 
towards what we feel about what we feel. I, that's what I mean by that. I'm not ignoring and nor, nor do I, you know, I, I, I'm not recommending that anybody ignore what they feel, but take what you feel, take inventory and now compare that to what the word of God says about it and stop making it so much about me, me, me. Will I ever get married? Will I ever do this? Well, what is the will of God for your life? And that's what we need to be asking for. God, what is your will for my life? Because a lot of times we find ourselves in pain and in situations that if we would have considered God in the first place, we probably wouldn't be in these situations. So instead of focusing the attention back on you, focus the attention on the Lord. God, I feel this pain. Now, what do you want me to do with it? Because the Bible says, cast your cares on him for he cares for us. So here, Lord, here is my pain. Here is my anger. Here is my resentment. Here is my, my, uh, vengeance that I want to, that I want to give to someone here is my offense. Here is my unforgiveness. Help me. Like we need help from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't do it on our own. And so I think that's what I mean by my attention is more on him than focusing on how I feel. You know what I mean? I asked you a question that, and I love the response. And I don't know if you're going to get the same response when I did the (laughs) pre-interview, but I said, you're single now. Uh, How many kids do you have? I have three. You have three kids. Three boys. Yeah. And, Having a single woman with three kids, and what are the ages? My oldest is 13, my middle is 11, and my youngest will be 10 in May. And I ask you, do you feel like it's going to be difficult for you to be (laughs) remarried being a single woman with three kids? Not, I, I don't, because I believe that the person that I will have next will be from God. And I, I believe that. It, you know, when God brings that person into my life, he would have already had his heart prepared for what, I, for who I am and for what I am. Um, I am interested in, um, and I desire to be with somebody who seeks the Lord for me, like for my heart, for um, to know me and to know how the father sees me and, and how he wants him to respond to me. So I believe that um, if it's meant to be, these kids ain't about to be an issue and they're older. It's like, we ain't changing no diapers. They are fine. They can make their own grilled cheese, their own chicken nuggets. They're fine. <laughs> the reason why, and you didn't fail me in that response again, <laughs> because we, a lot of times people have a scarcity mindset and forget yeah. that God is God. God ain't Instagram. God ain't TikTok. Yeah. God is God. And what I mean by that is that you can listen to all these gurus try to tell you well you know uh you a leftover woman if you this age and yeah. all this crazy stuff that we digest yeah. and ingest instead of saying but what did god say yeah god's words are yay and amen yeah god says that he can grant you the desires of your heart and the reality is oftentimes we'll look around at our situation and we see it through our own lenses yeah. instead of saying but how does god see it yeah. and you said something so profound where you said i want a man that literally goes to god on learning how to love yeah. me yeah um and that's so important because that's who wrote the manual i did not write this man i don't even know me <laughs> like you know what i'm saying i don't even know I don't know. You have to seek the Lord who created me, who formed me before he placed me in the womb of my mother. You need to ask him because I I, I don't even know me. I don't all the time. You know what I'm saying? In every way, not the way the Lord knows me. You know, he knows us intimately and loves us intensely. So those that's who we need to go to when it comes to loving our significant other, like we, re- I feel like we only include the Lord when things are hard and not just initially making that like a, a commitment and a consistency of seeking the Lord on behalf of the person that I say I love. Well, let me all ask the you this. Time. You so spirit, you so word field. Have you always been like that? Like growing up? I've always, I've always been, I'm, I'm really literal with my words so I can't say I always love the Lord because I know that I didn't I did not I did not love him yeah. I did not I, I I did not love him but I I was raised in church so God has always been a focus in my right. life he's all I've always believed in the Lord to an extent you know what I'm saying but the Bible says if we love him then we obey him and I know 
I know I didn't obey him in so many seasons of my life. Yeah. So I can't say that I loved him all the time. Um, but I've always just like been in church and had this fire for God, like deep down inside me. And it's always been a part of my conversations. Really? Yeah, always. So when always. you, even when you were dating in high school yeah, or. Even in sin. And even when I was a hot you be, mess. You'd be talking, you, you be talking about the Lord. Yeah. I mean, if always, if it came up or something was going on, or if I had to, if I wanted to encourage people, like encourage a friend or whatever, God was always included in that. That's just how I've always been. And so you feel like, you know, we've saw the the growth throughout the the years or whatever, but did it just really elevate last year? Yeah. That's yeah. where you was just like, I'm unashamed, I'm unapologetic, I'm finna just go all in. Yeah, because what? <laughs> what do you mean? Cause they I mean, it's like, isn't that what we supposed to do? You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. we have, we we've just live in a society where we have compromised so much with our walk that it's common now. Like living like this in for Christ in totality is radical. You're too much. It's too. It's not that deep. Listen. All right. I I read. No, the go word. ahead. I go read ahead, the baby. Bible, and I know that there is going to come a day where we're going to stand before Him and have yes. to take account over the things we did do and the things that we didn't do. Every idol, every word is going to be taken into account. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yes, it is that serious to me. Yes, it is that deep to me. Yes, I am committed fully. And if you, if that's radical to you, then that's radical to you. I'm sorry, but I'm not. I don't want, I want to at least be a voice that is not going to compromise because there are so many that do. And I get it. You get caught up in the, I get it. But it's like, I can't, I can't, I can't know something and do something opposite of what I know. I can't. I know what the Lord has done for me. I know how he picked me up, right? Like the old folks used to say, how he picked me up, turned me around, around and placed, placed my, my feet, feet on, on the solid side. Ground. I get that now. You know what I'm saying? I know his word now. So if I know it and I say I love him, he said, Christ said, if you love me, then you obey me. You do what I say. It's not an option. He is Lord, not just Savior. He is Lord. And Lord means that he has to have full authority and dominion over your life in totality, not partially. He doesn't require partial faith. He requires you to believe fully in all, like all of it. Consider the Lord in all your ways. Like it's, it's either all or nothing. Do you think it'd be challenging to date you? Probably. <laughs> this is why I'm single. Probably. You're like, let me ask you something. Do you think there is a man that wants to deal with you? Oh, no, I, I know there are. No, she there is, isn't. I mean, I'm saying, I'm, I'm talking about, no, that. <laughs> Trust me, you speak in that language I like. Yeah. Uh, and so the reality is that, but have in the experience of it, do you find that guys may be, well, let me just ask you, do you even- I haven't dated to know, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Latarius, I don't know. How you don't, don't know, know, Ashley? You ain't, you ain't, no, you ain't, you know. no, you, you ain't talking on the phone, nobody? Nope. Nobody gonna be sliding in your DMs? Nope. Literally, I'm not, and- when I say I'm really not lying, I will I give people my phone all the time. Like you can see, it's nobody. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. There is no one. And then the people that do slide in DM, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> you know what? What you know, Megan Ashley? It's like you need you need to maybe get some help and then see what the Lord does with your life. I don't know, but it's nothing like substan like there's no substantial like solid people. That are in my DMs. That's okay. So, so you don't, you don't. So basically, you just don't go on dates or anything. I ain't been asked. Nobody ain't been trying to hook you up. No, you, your friends and stuff be like, no. I got the perfect guy. No, do you feel like that's the best way? Is somebody to try to you know buy referral? I don't. I, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know because this is so new for me. Like yeah. dating is so new, and then you got married young. How old are oh, you? Yeah, I was twenty. Oh yeah. So oh yeah, you wait. Yeah, you. Yeah. I was so young, but then it's like now being an adult and not compromising in my faith like this is the, like no no Christ. explain what that means when you say not compromising in my faith for all the men that may not know what that means I'm just not compromising like I'm like I talked about it on, on Valentine's Day like I'm not having sex until I get married that is I'm just not and that just I just weeded out a whole lot of people <laughs> 
<laughs> no, seriously. He was like, hey, and click. I don't want to talk. I don't even want to look at her no more. She just too much. It's not that deep. But it is, though. And I just can't because I know better. And I believe I, I agree with you right there. Um, and and so when you said that on Valentine's Day, did, do you ever get women because I what people don't know yeah. is this a lot of women when I, I took a vow of abstinence in 2020 on my podcast um I've fallen off throughout the times throughout that season uh oh well throughout the years mm-hmm. uh but my heart posture is still I want to you know wait till marriage to have mm-hmm. sex with my wife but I've had women surprisingly that I'll go on a date with that be like oh no we're gonna have sex if, if I ain't no way it's, I'm gonna marry you unless we have the, sex it's first it's the crazy I mean it's not the craziest thing yeah. I get it but it's just like Again, if we love them, <laughs> it's just the bottom line. But then they, but then they try to get real. So Megan, they'll say, "Listen, now, okay, I love Jesus. We know all that. But at the end of the day, I can't be married to somebody that I'm not pleased sexually then with." Then you don't love the Lord. Stop lying. You don't love Him. They say, "The Megan asked, you can't tell me I don't love Jesus. I, I love Jesus. I, I love the Lord. Actually, now I love the Lord. I can because the Word says this is how I can. The Word says." If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll keep my commandments. You'll obey me. So if sex is supposed to be saved for marriage, then that is a if that's a commandment and that's something that God has required and you're trying to compromise on that, <laughs> then there is some love that is not there for the Lord. Period. All right. So then they say this, Megan. They say, listen, well, you know, a lot of men, they they struggle with erectile dysfunction at a certain age. So I got to see if that thing works. So I need to be able to test that thing out or something to, and, and, and to see because at the end of the day, I can't be married to somebody and I'm going to end up cheating. <laughs> I'm going to end up cheating if I marry somebody and it don't work. He said, Christians, y'all just over it. Y'all, y'all not being real. You're not being real. This is a real thing that people are dealing with. Mm-hmm. So why would I sit here and take vows of somebody and I don't even know if they penis even work? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say this. You know what was real? What's real? The cross. Oh, Lord. And so Told you. Maybe the same you power that raised Christ from the dead. Can raise his penis? That's what you about to say? Can do anything. He raises penis saying. from the dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, preach right there. The the Lord is the 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 Holy Spirit can help us with anything. Do you know what I'm saying? Whether that man has a dysfunction or not, whether it can ever work out in that way or not, if the if God called you to that person, then His grace is sufficient. And so, if God has called you to that person, then His grace is sufficient for you to wait. Let me tell you how powerful that is because it, it brought back uh, to my remembrance an interview I did in Freeport, Freeport, Bahamas. That's where it was. And this couple talked about how for the first five years of marriage or something or seven years, they only had sex like three times mm. because she was dealing with a medical issue and, you know, and it was just so painful or whatnot. And then, and each time she got pregnant and then while she was pregnant, you know, her medical issues subsided or whatnot, but they had to work through five years of that. And now, you know, they're having, you know, uh, an abundant sex life, but and I asked him, I said, did you ever cheat during that moment? He said, no. He said, I thought about it. She even encouraged me to. She was like, man, I oh, know wow. you need to go get this. She, he was just like, no. He said, I couldn't do it. But God gave him the grace to cover his wife yeah. through that moment. Yeah. Another situation, same thing where I had the Smiths on, this older couple, the girl, the 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 wife, she goes by Bad Girl Riri 504 <laughs> and from New Orleans, and she's real funny. But she talked about how uh, during their first years of marriage, you know, she was dealing with, you know, um, issues down there or whatnot. And he was just like, he would just pray. You know, mm-hmm. she had a very strong bout of endometriosis. And, um, and he would just pray and 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 just suffer through it with her yeah. or whatnot. And she's like, she was like, I just wish he could have just, I wish she said, I want to have sex so bad because she was very vibrant sexually. Mm-hmm. And she just said that through that season, and that's what we don't understand is when we take these vows, we take these vows through sickness and in health and yeah. don't realize that a lot of us just really don't want to sign up for that. Yeah. And too, I think, I think a lot of times we're just not aware how selfish we are. You know what I mean? Like, is this about you or is this marriage to glorify the Lord? Like, who is it about? 
You know what I'm saying? And I get it. Like you want to like, and I believe that God wants us to have fun in our marriage. I believe he wants us to have, you know, abundance in all the ways, you know, but I think that marriage is a union that glorifies the Lord. And what does that look like? I was going to ask you that. What does that look like for you? I mean, I think like, let me ask you, did your past marriage glorify God? Um, I would say, I, I, not, not totally. I think that, not in totality. There, yeah, not in totality. I think there might've been times that maybe in the beginning, you know, I don't know it, when life just gets so busy, you know what I'm saying? And when you have babies that are young, just life happens yeah. and before you know it, five years have gone by and you're like, Oh my gosh, like how did we get here? Um, but not, especially not towards the end though. And I just believe that that's important. I believe that your marriage should glorify the Lord. I feel like it's a, it's a sacred union that glorifies him. So, And when you, when you, and maybe you haven't even gotten the framework mentally from what that looks like for you in your next marriage, do you have any type of reference in your mind where you say, this is what I'm talking about that glorify God? Does that mean that we have to be preachers and we travel around the world and no, preach the good news? Or no. How does your marriage glorify God? I think it's like, you know how, oh God, I don't know who said it in the Bible, but knowing God and the power of his resurrection and his suffering. Yeah. I think it's that like, it's the good and the bad and learning how to um, navigate and endure all of the things in love, all of the things that comes with a marriage. It's just enduring it all and being committed and unwavering commit commitment, even when things are hard because marriage is difficult. You know, it, it looks easy nowadays on social media, but like, it's challenging. Like this is the person that's going to bring out the ugliest parts of you. Yes. And it's going to show you the ugliest parts of them. Yes. And so if you don't have Christ at the center of that, I don't know how people make it and are healthy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like healthy, not existing, but healthy. I don't know how people do it. When you look back over your marriage, do you think there were some things you could have done to save it? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like everybody has a part to play. Absolutely. Well, but, but sometimes people just feel like they may have just married the wrong person altogether I mean, and they just try to make it and, work. And maybe sometimes that is the case. Um, but I think that, you know, I think divorce grieves the Lord. I think he, you know, it hurts his heart. And so I think that if we're, you know, not mindful of, again, keeping him at the center and including him in all things, Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just even in the practical ways of like, Lord, this man just really upset me. Yep. Before I even respond to him, help me. Help me so that I can be effective in my communication so that you're glorified, even though we're in this disagreement. Lord, my, my, my prayer is that you be glorified in this. I pray, God, that you give me eyes to see him the way that you see him so that I have grace and empathy and compassion for whatever he might be dealing with. Like, are we hold considering Hold on, hold on, hold him? on. Megan Ashley, hold on. Are we you said, Hold on, you said that's, that's, the, that's the mindset that you have now? Or? Yes, absolutely. Be I just think that, I think that, I think that this life isn't about us. I don't believe it's about us. I, I believe that it's about the Lord. And so, when things happen in, in relationships, especially marriage, because marriage is supposed to be the example of Christ's love, like Christ and his bride, right? So it's supposed to show that dynamic. And so I just don't believe that I'm in a marriage to benefit me. And I did not know that before. I was in that marriage because I wanted a husband. I wanted the family structure. I wanted the, you know what I mean? Like it was me, 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 but did I get into this to glorify the Lord, to be an example of, of the church and this relationship between Christ and the church? Like, did, did I have like an intentional mind frame in going into this marriage? Am I showing, do I want to have like a kingdom mindset in my marriage, like to, to, to advance the kingdom of God in my marriage? So Megan, let me ask you this. So you feel that in a point of anger, you could take on that heart posture that you just articulated. Now, 
because I have the Lord in my life. Yes. But before, no. Before it would be bet, <laughs> bet, bet, at bet, F you too, and bet. I mean, yes, without the Lord, that is my heart posture. Oh, but God. with the Lord, because because you're because my if when you when you do something to somebody else, we think that that's separate than doing it to the Lord. Oh God, that's good. Do you see what I'm saying? Ooh, like Lord my Jesus. my disrespect towards my towards my spouse is a dishonor towards the Lord. Like I'm not just offending my spouse. I'm 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 offending the Lord. How, where, but where did this come from? Like the you, Bible? Are y'all reading? It no, here? I'm talking about how you just transition that quick in, in, in less I mean, than a year. I mean, because God can because God can do a work in your heart. Like when you surrender your life to Him, He can really do a work in your heart and change some things. Like you know what I'm saying? Like but he I don't really think you hear can. how you sound. You don't hear what you. you <laughs> like that it sounds like you done went through a master class a metamorphosis I an mean, awakening with God an I encounter I feel like I did I feel like I I mean but and it's it's an everyday ongoing process because I'm so it, it sounds so like cliche and corny but I really am in love with the Lord and I love reading his word and I love getting to know him and because his way is just better you know what I mean like his way is just better than my way I've tried all the other ways and I don't want to waste another year of my life not doing it his way because his way is always better. It's always better. He's never failed. His track record is immaculate. So I just rather do it his way. So if that means I have to humble myself when I'm angry, yes, I'm making that about me. Lord, okay, help me. I'm angry. I'm not going to deny that I'm angry. I'm angry. Help me though. Help me. I would love to know what that feels like to experience a woman like this. <laughs> like literally, like a woman that can sit there. Ain't that right, King? Like that's a <laughs> not I, ain't that right, King. Yeah, I gotta talk to my boy over there. He said, this, I need a man. Yeah. Forget you. Yeah, because you because you understand what I'm talking about. Like he know what I'm talking about. That be sounding too good to be true, don't Jay? Let me tell you something. That's that's a different level. I mean, but it takes it takes work. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not perfect at it. Though that's where my heart and my intention That's what I'm saying, is, but I'm talking about know? to even be self-conscious and aware. Yeah. To think of that ahead of time. I've offended the Lord enough. I've offended him enough and I've hurt enough people by by my heart not being close to the Lord. I don't want to live that way anymore. You know what I mean? And we 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 feel like we have all the time. We 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 wake up with arrogance and pride and thinking that we have tomorrow guaranteed to us and we don't. We don't. So I'm going to spend every day of my life as best I can intentionally living for the Lord. Even in my thinking, in my responses, in my offense, in my unforgiveness, in my job, in my kid as a mother, as a friend, as I'm going to consider the Lord. Period. I don't have, we don't have the time and everybody can play around and act like you have all the time in the world because you have preachers that are telling you you're going to be a millionaire this year and a billionaire this year. And that's not the truth. The Bible says we don't know <laughs> the time nor the hour. Tomorrow is not promised, period. And so time is up on being soft in this approach to how we live for Christ. <sighs> It's time up. And then we wonder why our relationships are so messed up. And we wonder why our platonic relationships are so jacked up. And we wonder why I, I don't I have anxiety and I'm depressed and I'm this and I'm that. Are we really taking our relationship with the Lord serious? Do we love him or do we not? Bottom line. <sighs> and everybody has to get to that place on their own. I'm not saying everybody has to, you know, this is my conviction. This is based off of what I know about the Lord. Not saying that everybody has to, you got to come to that on your own. But as for me, right? In my house, <laughs> what I do, where You're I'm at. praise the Lord. All the time. You touched just quick, quickly on like mental illness and you've been very open and honest and vulnerable about your journey of suicide ideation, suicide mm -hmm. attempts. Um, how have you been well, matter of fact, just share that with the people yeah. that don't know. What has been your journey with with mental illness? Um, I, I probably since I, I think I told you since I was about 16, I struggled really bad with depression and suicide. So at that time, both sets of my parents, so my mother and my step stepfather and my father and my stepmother were getting divorced at the same time. 
the same exact time around the, I think they were like a month or two apart from each other. So God. life was just like, and I'm 16. And so I don't know if anybody knows, but like scientific facts show that uh, girls at the age of 16 are like mentally, uh, what was it, Jordan? <laughs> like they're mentally, clinically insane. They're clinically described as insane because of their hormones are so, our hormones are so crazy and we're growing. So, so imagine what, being- That's what was wrong with my daughter around that age. <laughs> imagine being 16 and going through- both of your parents getting a divorce, you know, it was, it was hard for me and feeling like, you know, both of, I felt like at the time my parents were so focused on their divorces that I was just a casualty and they weren't really focused on the effect that it had on me, which I totally have yeah. grace and empathy for because they're human. Right. So like I'm going through it right now. So I get it. You know yeah. what I mean? So I have grace and empathy for my parents and I know that they, they, you know, especially my mom, like she did what she could. She did her best. Um, but I just felt like I kind of got caught in the crosshairs of all of those things. And I just fell into, um, you know, cutting and, and depression and just wanting to die and even trying to, I tried to one time, I tried to take a bunch of pills and the Lord was like, girl, <laughs> you know, and I woke up and I was like, so embarrassing. Like I can't kill myself right. Right, like that's embarrassing to wake up after trying. Like I hated that feeling. You know, she said it, it, it was. It was like, girl, stop. You have to live and do this work. So I love you. Get over it. You know. So yeah, I love you. Get but over I mean, I struggled for a long time it, up until about twenty twenty two. Um, is when well, the end of twenty twenty one was the last time that I was physically like a, harmful to myself. And, um, and I believe that the Lord has delivered me from suicide and depression. Like I don't have those thoughts and feelings. I don't even remember the last time I had like a thought like that. So how'd you cast down that imagination? The word of the Lord. Well, like, they, 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 and they had you on medication around that time. So or? in 2019, I was diagnosed with bipolar depression. That's when I started to get on, um, uh, try different medications. And so, but, and, and that, it's so hard because you have to try it for at least three months. You yep. don't, and they don't know how your how body's going to respond to mm -hmm. it. And so I tried four different medications and had four different reactions. like reactions to all, and they were horrible. Either one was like massive headaches, or one was like I couldn't sleep, or the other one was I slept too much, too much. Yep. or the other one was like no physical, um, like my body in certain places would just be numb, like I couldn't feel anything. So it was just weird, like weird. And I just, it wasn't for me. I was becoming like. Your body in certain places will feel numb. Yeah. Like certain places. Armani, my is body that would probably, just be that's numb. probably the problem, huh? You said that you would have problems with your body in, uh, mm -hmm. in certain parts, which is I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't have any sensation to it in certain places. So. Yeah, it's, it's like you you really do your research and really like. But they're always testing it. They be like, "Well, try this. Yeah. Well, try this dosage. Just do ten milligrams of this. Well, let's do five. Let's do twenty. The Holy <laughs> Spirit. You need to ask for wisdom and discernment when it comes to that. Like, get a doctor. I, I advocate for mental health. So, like, get a doctor. Get a therapist. I I advocate for that. But you need the Holy Spirit to help you to know. Like, okay, Lord help me in deciding what medications help lead me into the right research to look up like all of those things. Cause the Holy spirit will help you. Yeah. Um, and then make it a practice to know your word and to like, the Bible tells us that we can cast down imaginations, anything that tries to exalt itself above the Lord. Like we can cast those things down. And so, but you only can do that knowing his word. Yeah. And so I encourage anybody who is struggling in their mental health, like the Lord cares about your mental health. Don't let anybody tell you that the Lord doesn't care about your yeah. mental health, that he doesn't like he's empathetic to us. Right. We have a we serve a Lord who empathizes with us. That's what the Bible says. He empathizes with us. So ask him for help in stewarding how you navigate through your mental health, whatever it is, whether it's medication, therapy, whatever. Include the Lord into that. Don't 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 disclude him from from that process. <sighs> you don't been through some things. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, as you done been through some things, it's, it's crazy, right? And and every time it goes right back to the Word of God, fighting that stuff off. Yeah, the Word of God. That's it. That's you said it. the Word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. Yep, that's what the Word is. And you said crystals can't do it. Can't crystals cut can't it. cut through that. I'm sorry, they can't. Sage can't cut through it. I, I know you want it to. 
It ain't doing nothing but making your house smell. That's it. Your house just smells like stuff. I get it though. I was listen, y'all. I was saging crystal. I was charging crystals. I was doing all tuning forks. I was doing all that mess. Tuning forks. What's yeah, that? It's like I don't know vibrations. I don't know. <laughs> I was doing all that. All of it. Did you see it work a little bit? No. <laughs> I did not. I told you I ain't have. I had hot rocks in a smoky room. <laughs> it's fine. Mega. I get it. Yeah, Lord yeah, 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 smoke, yeah, smoky room. Yeah, and hot rocks from charging them in the sun. That was hot. Hot rocks in your house smell like sage. Oh yeah, sage and rosemary, sage and lavender. Just walking around talking about she called a robot. She it's like that. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Talk about in the name of Jesus. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Put that. Put those herbs away. <laughs> Please. And put in some food. <laughs> but yes, if you don't go make a pot roast and sit down. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Crush that lavender and get yourself and some then, oil. And or take some, a bath. And take, right. <laughs> Girl. I know the Holy Spirit was like, oh, here she go with them rocks. <laughs> here she go with them rocks. It ain't going to do nothing. What did you say? Charging them in the sun? <laughs> Hot rocks. <laughs> Hot crystals. That's it. I'm telling you, the word of God. That's all you need. I'm telling y'all. Just read the word. And so you are rooted and grounded in the word of God. I didn't take one crystal, one sage, one rock, one nothing to my new home. And I have had the peace. The peace of God is in my home. Yes. Every person that comes in my house says, it, I can feel God's presence Ooh, in this house. That's the biggest compliment that's you can ever get. That's the biggest compliment you can oh ever get. Oh, the pit, so um, when Amanda and um, MJ came, yeah. she was like, when I got off the plane in Atlanta, I could feel the darkness, like the principality. Yes. I she told was you, like, Atlanta's when a I dark walked, city. She was like, when I walked in your in your house, it was like breathing fresh air. She was like, I could sense that God has been here. And that's the, and I'm telling you, and I did all I, without a rock, hmm. without a sage, without anything. The presence of God is in my home because I make room for him. Teach. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I let him have food. Like you can inhabit all of this space. I'm not saying, Lord, you can have this space and sage. You can have this space and rocks. You can have this space and uh, sound bowls. You can have this place. No, this place belongs to the Lord. He can inhabit all of it. Not some of it, all of it. So yeah, that's it. I don't have to have no sage or none of that. And I like that. You know, I really like my, my bowls. I thought they were so nice and lovely. I do it. I ain't throw, I ain't throw, I don't use them. I haven't thrown them away because they're so pretty, you know. But I don't, I don't use them anymore. You use it to bake cakes in. Right, this is decoration. Decoration. Yeah. Let me, let me. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Y'all, please stop saging and crystal in your home. Sorry. I man, people be in so many arguments about that. I'm telling oh, you, yeah. sage be working. You got it. You got to open the windows up. You just get the sage, and I'd be like, listen. All right. I'd be like, okay. And, but we've adopted these principles in the body of Christ. Yeah. We literally, and, and, and you'll see it, and you and you find yourself trying to debate with fellow Christians about stuff that is witchcraft. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that I, um, like, if you ain't saved, do your thing. Exactly. Grab your sage and your crystal. Like, have I, don't, I have no expectations, or you have no, like, okay, yeah. that's your, you don't, but for those who say they believe in Christ, there it is. I'm just saying the same power that resurrected him, that resurrected Christ from the dead, is the same power that lives in us. So we have all we need. One hundred percent. When we have the Holy Spirit, we have all we need. Like He left us His Spirit to help us. He didn't leave us rocks and sage. He didn't. They was not in that upper room with rocks and sage. I'm, I can guarantee y'all he wasn't. I can promise you they were not. She said they in the upper room. They said they devoted themselves to prayer and the teaching of the apostles, Teach. not anything else. Teach. That's it. Teach. So. Teach. This is gonna be interesting. This 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 relationship journey that that you know this love journey is gonna be interesting because you have to have a rooted. You have to have a man that's solely rooted in the Bible. Yeah. He can't be some. Typical church goer. Yeah. Somebody just attend church because he's trying to appease you. Yeah. You know, because you're going to be able to identify. Quickly. Real quickly. Quickly. You're like, oh, a counterfeit. Bye. I mean, get <laughs> Behind me, gone. <laughs> Beat it. 
I do not have time for that because truly I do believe that marriage is supposed to glorify the Lord. Yeah. So if it's not going to be that, like then, then if it's not it. that, then no. Yeah. Like it's no matter how far it is. Nah. No matter how much money you got. No. I ain't, that's not appeasing to me at all. Which was surprising to me. You were just like, you just don't. Now, now, now I know you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in tongues and all that good stuff. <laughs> but you tell me you don't care the financial status of a guy. I'm saying it's not my focus. But do you care? If you met a guy that was tongue talking believer, uh, uh, your kids have become his own. He looks at it like this and all that. And he's like, I cover you. He prays over you. He washes you with the water of the word and all that. And let's say he's making, we say he's making $50,000 a year. If if that's what the Lord has called him to do, then that's totally fine. Because I don't, I'm not in the marriage for that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I do also believe that any man that is rooted in the Lord is doing what God has called him to do. And I believe that the Lord will provide all his needs. I believe that. So I, so for me, it's like, it really don't matter if it, it like the man that I know that I will marry. Cause it'll either be that or I won't marry, which I'm cool with too. Um, but he will be a man that loves the Lord and allows the Lord to lead him in all that he does. And so even in his in, in his job, whatever that is, I believe that he will be doing what God has called him to do. And when you do what God calls you to do, he supplies all of our needs. I wish this, this is the narrative that's spoken about on social media is been in purpose yeah. because we always, we always make purpose finances and I keep saying these people get it wrong they yeah. get it so wrong because I remember in seasons where I wasn't oh I'll tell you this I was talking to a couple in uh, Jamaica beautiful couple uh, that was on the podcast and they were talking about in the seasons when they made the least amount of money they were the happiest from a marital couple as a couple. Yeah. They spent more time together. Yeah. Their kids were thriving. Like they, they were the happiest. Yeah. And then what happened was he went to go chase money, got him a job, uh, and they were separated. Like he was working in Kingston and um, <laughs> making more money, news broadcast, doing all this type of stuff, working for a news station, and wasn't spending time with his family. Family was falling apart. Kids yeah. didn't even know him when he came home, yeah. but was making more money. Yeah, And he felt the Holy Spirit tell him, save your family, leave this job alone. Mm. He left the job. People called him stupid. You know, they like, what is wrong with you? You mm. making all this money now? You finna go and, and, and go try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like literally trying to figure how you gonna pay your bills and yeah. you gonna leave your job that that don't even make sense. Yeah. He said people called him stupid. People called him crazy. People laughed at him. And he said, and in that decision, he was able to save his marriage. He yeah. said, money don't mean nothing to me. Yeah, because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of the Lord and all his righteousness and everything else will be added unto all you. These all shall these things shall be added. Like, so I think that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, Whoever I marry next, he will be a man that seeks the, the kingdom of God first. But you said something else that I don't think a lot of people, and I don't know if you really believe what you said. <laughs> you said that you would be happy if you never got married again. Yeah, I'll be content. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Because. <laughs> don't you talk about the Lord and the Lord going to be my husband? No, I'm not. <laughs> the Lord going to be my husband. The Lord cannot be your husband, y'all. Please stop with that. He is not your husband. <laughs> I mean, I guess with the bride and the church, whatever. Yeah. But, but you'll be content. You'll be content. Yeah. Content, never marrying. And you're because young. Because this life is a this life is so short. It's a vapor. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not. I, we're here not to. We're like we're here for a reason and a purpose, and and it's to prepare us for eternity. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like in eternity, our focus isn't going to be our spouse, isn't going to be our children, isn't going to be our jobs, isn't going to be our influence, isn't going to be like our focus is going to be on the Lord. We're worshiping the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. So my life and my job now is to be in preparation of that. I am going to sit in eternity and worship Him forever forever and so i need to be preparing now to worship him forever like now i worship him all the time you really believe this yes my life ain't about to be <laughs> the focus is on the lord in in eternity not your marriage and so and so i'm cool if i if it doesn't happen because i want what god wants for me if that's his will then cool like 
his way is just better than my way. I just, I don't know. But even on this earth, companionship, having somebody hold yeah. hands with, go to the movies with, sit around and share and talk about I your just, podcast in totality with and and talk about, hey, I just got this brand deal with. You just you just saying that you so rooted and grounded in Jesus that you would just be content never having that and watching that be displayed through your friends' lives, going to weddings, watching everybody else take nuptials and vows, uh, watching everybody else build legacy together. And your legacy is I experienced a broken home. I watched my parents go through broken marriages. I watched myself go through a bit broken marriage and I never had what I just articulated so beautifully, this kingdom marriage mm-hmm. and a marriage that glorifies God that they will throw dust on and dirt on my grave and never experience that. You are content with that. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I mean, <laughs> that is freaking amazing. That is, that is my, that is my, that is my intent and, it, and, and my heart posture. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, am I going to feel things? I'm human. Of so course. am I going to be at a wedding and that feeling might come where it's like, dang, man, I wish I, but when I, when I make it a, a, an intentional effort every day to posture my heart in the direction of the Lord, then he becomes more and more of my go-to and more and more of my focus. So that when I see people get married, I'm genuinely happy for them because that's what the Lord has for them. And I, I want whatever the Lord has for me. Do you know what I mean? Let me tell you something. And that's why you're going to have the marriage that you desire. I pray. See, I ch- no, no, it's the truth <laughs> I because I, I understand. Do. I understand heart posture. You said I, I challenge you in this for a reason, because what they've always found and you, you'll, you'll see it. It's the one that knows how to base and how to abound. The one that knows how to say, God, if this is for me, thank you. Mm-hmm. But if not, thank, thank you. you. Then God says, yeah. You're worthy. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart and I'm going to blow your mind. Yeah, I appreciate Like does. that, that, <laughs> that heart posture, because I hear people say it sometimes and they, and I'll be like, you know, you don't really believe that, but you really believe that. Like you really, I can no, hear I really the heart. It. Oh, I, I heard it. Yeah, I really You believe really it. believe that. And I'm telling mm. you, as sure as I'm sitting on this podcast, <laughs> you're going to have exactly that. I pray. Because you're submitted. Yeah. And you're surrendered. What God, when God, what God performs his best is with a surrendered heart mm-hmm. because he says, Oh yeah. So I can do whatever I want to with you. Good. Yeah. And in the words of Megan Ashley, bet, bet. But, but he's <laughs> going, he's going to take what you do. Yeah. He's going to take the desires of your heart. He says, now I have fertile ground to do what I want to do. Yeah. And, and I have submitted hearts. that says not my will, but let thy will be yeah. done. And that's when God yeah. makes a miracle happen. Yeah. I think that's important to have that heart posture. Do I, now, I'm, I'm human, so of I'm, course I'm gonna you're going to have needs. You're going to feel yeah, whatever you're going to feel. I'm not going to have a perfect response all the time, but that is where I'm posturing my heart every single day. That's where, like, when I go to the Lord, I'm constantly asking Him, Father, examine my heart, try my ways, test me. I want to be like You, and so in any way possible, if I'm doing anything, Father, that is is not pleasing to You, if my heart is being selfish in any way, help me because I want to be like Him. I really do. And I don't want to compromise in that. Not relationally, I don't want to compromise. Professionally, I don't want to compromise. I don't want to compromise in that. His way is just better. You a wife. I thank you. You know what? It's <laughs> like I talk about that on my podcast. I say there's a sound of a wife. And I and it hit me one day. I was doing an interview with this couple, Siobhan and Cheyenne, and she was saying she was speaking. And I just heard the essence of wife just as she was talking and they were just sitting there talking about their journey uh, and how his he lost his wife or whatever. The wife passed away. And then I was hearing how she was covering him in the process. And and I and, and tears just literally start streaming mm. down my face. She said, what's what's wrong? What's what's wrong? And I said, I will not compromise having a woman of God. I just started crying. She was like, she said, well, baby, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's OK. <laughs> You don't have to, baby. I said, I would not compromise having a woman of God. And the reason why that was so poignant for me in that moment is because I was listening to, you know, different people saying, maybe your expectations too high. Like you want a woman that's going to be laying hands and praying and this type of stuff. You want a woman that live it. And I'd be like, hey, am I tripping? You know, mm-hmm. are these standards and preferences I have, is that too much? Because it's literally rooted in biblical truths. Yeah. And I'm like, well, maybe, 
So then this is one girl that I was dating at the time as a friend that I had and uh, wasn't no alignment whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, well, we cool. So let me just. It works. Yeah. Let me just yeah. see if, you know, if this could possibly be anything. And we think we can change, like influence people to, oh, like we we're we're, <laughs> we're we have chemistry in these areas. And then so maybe I can influence them to be. And it's like, look, y'all, I'm telling you. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I said, well, I mean, I can influence her yeah, and I can no. tell this. And she don't really read the Bible. She don't really go to church like that. She don't really she don't really talk about God like that. She don't really have but, any. But she's a good person. A good person. And she's. She's yeah. an honest person. Yeah. She's going to always be real with you, and we got a solid friendship. So let me try, try, try. Yeah. I did that for about two months. I said, what am I doing? I said, this is... It's just I said, not, I'm trying too hard. It ain't yeah. supposed to be this difficult. Yeah. And then one day she said, she said, that's not who I am. She said, I don't... I'm not into all that God stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I was just like... <laughs> So what did you do? I said, <laughs> I said, but I'm trying hard. And, but, Ooh, you so, were disappointed. Oh, disappointed. Said, I was just like, man. I said, because she's so fine. <laughs> I said, if you could just be saved, you'd be a fine Christian. <laughs> do you love him at all? Do you love a little bit? Just a little bit? <laughs> a little. He said a mustard seed. Do you have that? Do you have that? Do you have a little bit of that? She said, I don't listen. It ain't for me. I would talk to her about the <laughs> podcast. They'd be like, say, did you watch the last episode? She said, I don't really like hearing all. They just be talking about stuff that I don't really care about. He's said, like, but it's my podcast. <laughs> it's my podcast. <laughs> But it's my podcast. It's my podcast. Yeah, she didn't like you. <laughs> she said she said she just didn't like nothing that I like yeah, like that. She, she didn't said, like you. And that's what we be we be thinking that, oh, we just don't like it. No, y'all don't like each other. <laughs> you don't really like each other. And then the crazy thing about it, we be having a solid friendship. And so yeah, it's like it's like we friends. cool and this and we exactly. Just be friends. And then, and, you, and she was like, Well, I just and then she'll say stuff like, I wish I could have a guy like you, but it's just that you just too deep. <laughs> oh <laughs> Lord. I, said, I get that all the time it's, it, or it's too deep or you're too deep and it's like well I said well and that's why I said I'm content yes like if it don't like then cool because I know that who God is continuing to shape me to be I'm I'm submitted to that yeah and I'm not about to change who I am do just to do. have yeah. companionship yeah when I have the ultimate companion all the time you know what I mean like I the, I have the Holy Spirit that lives within me like I'm I'm good. I am content with that. You know, what I mean? that is enough. He is Lord. <laughs> I'm about to say, have you ever tried to fashion a guy into the 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 person you wanted them to be? But you got yeah. married so young that yeah. I mean, me and, and with me and my ex husband, and we were so young that by the time halfway through our marriage, we're look, we're I'm sure there were many times where he looked at me and was like, "I don't even like you. I don't even like you." <laughs> Like you're repulsive to me. <laughs> I'm sure he did, and I'm sure, and I know I had moments where I'm like, I don't like you. <laughs> Do you feel like is it what people say? People grew apart. Yeah, because, or is this a lot of resentment sets in I mean, that no one all is forgiven? Of that, I think resentment comes in, but I think you, you know, women, we grow often. Mm -hmm. Like we change often. Yeah. And for men, y'all really don't change like that. You know, y'all kind of do the same thing y'all been doing since y'all was nine. <laughs> It's just bigger. You're just a bigger person. <laughs> but you're Doing the same, the same thing. You, thing. <laughs> you know, but women, it's like we, we're so, you know, we, we're so emotional and we yeah. think differently and we change. And one day we like red and then the next day we hate red. And yeah. then, you know, so we change. And I think that a man, this is why a man has to know the Lord and he has to seek the Lord on behalf of his wife or behalf of the woman that he's pursuing. Because you need a manual when that thing starts changing and shifting and she start, you know what I'm saying? You need a manual. You need a guide because on the one that created her. Mm. And I think if we're not mindful and intentional at keeping God as a focus and saying, okay, Lord, like I am forever. Like, I think we need to be forever curious about the person that we're with. Forever curious. Like we just need to forever be curious. Like familiarity breeds contempt. Don't be too familiar. Don't don't feel that you got this person figured out and you just it's you no, this is a treasure that you have and you should be excited about it every single day. You should be trying to learn more about this person every single day. It should be like an effort to learn this person every day. You know what I mean? And then when you make that effort, then you're not growing apart. You're growing together. You know what I mean? 
So, yeah. Well, that dog gonna make an ass be talking that good talk, boy. I'm telling you, boy. <laughs> good Lord. See, my boy over there, he, he agree. He agree. Well, we're talk. around each other all the time. Yeah, so but, he, like... but he, he, he still ain't got, <laughs> no, he still ain't normalized because he be out here in these dating streets, so he hear a different type of language out here. Yeah. Am I right or am I right? I know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> am I right or am I right? You ain't got to answer that. I'm right. You ain't got to answer For that. Sure. I'm right. Because it's a different language out there yeah. that you don't know that men get a chance to experience out there. Yeah. And it's like, it's you're you're speaking a different language. Yeah. It's a different thought process. It's, it's a different language because we're not focused on teaching the word of God like it's really not a different language it, it's biblical it's the same Bible so we so far away from the word oh, of God we're so that far away from like... the word of, we're so far away and and too because I'm, I'm I'm always coming from a Christian perspective right from a Christ perspective because that's who I believe in and that's who I live my life for so when we have a bunch of teaching and preaching that is about self then we have a bunch of relationships that are about self. Megan Ashley, did you just say what you said when you said what you said and how you said it? <laughs> you, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, like, because that just illuminated in my mind when you're, about when, the When preaching. we are being taught that our most valuable relationship is about you, your most important relationship is about you, then how else are we going to approach other relationships? When your relationship with the Lord is about you, when you're taught that the that your relationship with the Lord is about you and what you can get from him and not for who he is and and what he's done. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's about you. So, of course, we're getting into relationships for us, selfishly motivated. We don't even approach our relationship with the Lord selflessly. We're selfish and prideful. And that's why we see the relationship statuses that we see now. So there's that. This girl enslaved me in the spirit. <laughs> it's just that right there just hit. That's that hit. The, just... Bi the Bible gives you so much context on how to deal with every relationship. So this ain't new language. The Bible has context for everything. You just choose to read it and obey it or you don't. And I'd rather, I wish people would just be more honest and saying, I actually don't love the Lord and I don't believe his word. <laughs> so just <laughs> you know, say that. Well, Megan ain't going to say that. They're they just not going to be heathens out here and agnostic. and They are atheist. though, but they are. They are. They are. They absolutely are. So <laughs> just because you're not saying that's that's not what you identify with, but your actions identify with that. You ain't no, no, no repentance, no holiness. It's just self. Your next million. Megan Ashley, you started something. I'm, well, you're stepping on some toes I'm right not. now. I'm not. You are. You're stepping on toes. You're offending people. Well, my, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my, my intention is not to offend. It really isn't. I really just believe that that's the truth, though. I believe. Not in every church, and it's not every pastor, so let me be very clear. It is not, because I go to a wonderful church. What church you go to? Um, 2819 in Atlanta. Um, pastor Phil Mitchell. Um, yeah. But... It's, you know, I'm so it's not every church and there are amazing churches in Atlanta too, different churches that are great. Um, but I think that we're seeing that like that is just the truth of the matter. No, you tell, you tell the truth now. A bunch of people that are in pulpits that are leaders that are shepherds who are saying things that are contrary to God's word. Period. Do you own it? And if we are not take, doing our own due diligence and knowing and seeking the Lord for ourselves, then we are going to be ignorant of it when it's preached on a platform. We're just going to be saying amen to stuff that don't even be in. You what are you don't even know what you amen in. Did you check? Or you just believe, oh, because he's up there. So you just believe that what he said was right. We have Ooh. people who get in pulpits and don't even open up the word of God. They're just motivational speakers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, we have to see that that plays effect in our relationships. The, your relationship with God is your most important relationship. Yep, that vertical it's, relationship. It's so important. And so if we're approaching that selfishly, then we're going to approach other relationships selfishly, period. Mm. It, we're always looking for what we can get out of it. Well, if it ain't serving me, that's the, you're right. If it ain't serving me. That's the language. I, I, you know, I'm done with things that don't serve me. What? That is imagine so true. Imagine if Christ said that. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? I ain't doing it. Uh-uh, not if it ain't serving me. I ain't get on that cross. <laughs> Could you imagine? 
And that's how we that's how we talk now. Yeah, if it ain't serving true. me. If it ain't serving me. But the Bible me. says that he didn't come, he didn't come to to he came to serve. Yeah. Like he Christ came to serve. Yeah. He didn't come to be, be served, served, but he came to serve. And so when we say that we are Christ followers and we say that when when we're taking on the identity of Christ, then we have to be servants, even in relationships that don't serve us sometimes. Like you like Sometimes that's the reality in marriage. Sometimes it ain't always 50-50. There might be a season where your your spouse can only provide 20%. Yep. So what you going to say? All right. I'm done. I'm it, done. It's no longer serving this me. This ain't serving me. <laughs> what? What Do your children serve you? I wish we don't they give would. up our relationship I with our children, right? Me. Our we don't give serve up that me. relationship. Bow down, son. Yeah. We don't stop. We don't stop loving them and providing for them, exactly, and being there for them when they're hurt and when they're sick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I think that I think that if we are not, you know, we got to be mindful to the stuff that we're digesting every day. And if you just digesting all this, all this talking that is about what you can get out of your relationship with the Lord, what you can get from Him, what He will do for you, and not just for who He is not just for how you can serve him, then I don't know how we expect our relationships to be in any other status than what they are now. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Megan. Sorry. I know. No, I'm exhausted. No, you didn't exhaust me. You got me, you got me <laughs> full. This this will happen when you get full. You get sleepy. Listen, so you had so listen. <laughs> So, what projects do you have coming up? I'm, I'm telling everybody, make sure you go subscribe to her uh, her podcast, In yeah. Totality. Uh, what else you got going I on? I don't have any projects outside of Patreon, like doing the docuseries. Yeah, it's that. my vlog. Tell people to, uh, people yeah. need to go ahead and join her Patreon. Patreon. We have we'll a, put a book link club. In the, you have a book club. We have a book club that we go through a book every quarter and we do live Zooms every Thursday where we talk about the book. Um, I am going to start a kind of second tier to my Patreon where it's going to be more about Bible studies and discipleships and um, some you know, doing some stuff like that. I don't know when, but yeah, that's it. Just the podcast, subscribe. So what links, uh, what links should I put in the description that so has I all things Megan Ashley? So, oh, so my website is www.themeganashley.com and all, and everything is on there. Good. YouTube, Good. all the things. I'm going to yeah. put a link there. Yeah. Go ahead, go follow her, go subscribe to the podcast, go join her community. Um, great content. Uh, I've checked it out. I love the vision that you display I love the Thanks. as you're taking people intimately into your space or yeah. whatnot and just showing them the world of Megan Ashley when I told people that I was going to have you on the podcast a lot of people's like I just love her oh I just love her That's and nice. um and um and but one thing you didn't do that disappointed that they'll be disappointed is that you didn't start crying because they said you cry. You, I you'll do start cry crying. You a cry a lot. lot. So I feel like I'm you sorry. feel like you robbed me uh, because you should start crying. So Dang cry it. right now. Cry. Okay. Start crying. And tears. But <laughs> it's, it's like when you say you cry a lot, do you, so I you do. believe you cry a lot too? Mm -hmm. I I used to like I used to be like a closet crier. And I would cry mainly because I was like in pain and yeah. I was sad. But now I cry all the time. Like cry more happy tears than anything. Like I really be like the joy of the Lord really be overtaking me. I really, I really would just be like, wow, Lord, like you are really good. And it brings me to tears sometimes when you think about it, like good. how good he's been. So yeah, I cry a lot. I'm always crying. Well, that's good that you're emotional that you're, and a lot of people don't know is that there be seasons where like, even with me, when I'm on my podcast, I'll be like, I'll have these moments where I'll get teary eyed or whatnot. Mm -hmm. They be like, you just, you're, you're an emotional man or whatever. And I said, well, shoot, you better, now the other side, I was running around shooting at people when I was growing up. You better be happy. I'm shedding some tears. Listen. Like, like I've opened my heart. And when you, the more you become a worshiper, the more that you become very vulnerable yeah. and present and intimate and be able to share intimate conversations yeah. with somebody and be present and hear the heart of people. Yeah. And so the reason why I'm able to flow the way I flow, well, I'm talking to a homeless person and my, my son and I, we, we out doing something with the homeless mm -hmm. or whatnot is because I have a deep compassion for humanity. Yeah. And so I can't sit back and just not feel what they're going through, yeah. you know, that I just get emotional. Yeah. Um, and I don't apologize for that. That's good. Yeah, we so need more. We, that's, that's you leading by example because we need more men 
that are afraid of being vulnerable in that way. You know 100%. what I'm saying? So I think that's beautiful. 100%. And I teach my sons the same way. It's like when my sons go through something and they be trying to be tough or whatever, I say, mm. man, cry. Like, let that out. Don't, yeah, you don't know, hold it. Yeah, because you see too many men dying from heart attack or whatnot yeah. uh, because they, they've been holding in years and years yeah. of trauma and they just too tough to just shed a tear. Yeah. You know, and then they self-medicate in all the improper ways instead of saying, get your good old cry. Yeah. Get a nice little cleansing, get yeah. up, dust your, your knees off and say, hey, I'm going to grind and I'm yep. going to go back at it again. Yep. But it's so many that. men that have turned their hearts off to love because a lot of them haven't been honest that they gave their love to the wrong person yeah. who mismanaged it. And now they like, these H's ain't loyal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, like the Usher song or whatever. And it's like, you start ideating with that mentality and now you're not trusting nobody. Yeah. You're not trusting anybody with your heart yeah. or the video that went viral where they asked Shaq, you know, can you... That really broke my uh, heart, man. Because a I lot didn't of even watch the him. whole thing but I saw a little bit of it and I was just like, man. He said, you can never trust a woman with your secrets. Wow. And it's a, it's so many men. And if you read those comments, majority of men said you can't. They'll use it against and you. So, and so, and what I would say for that is for women, because I know a lot of times women will be like defensive and be like, they just heard or da 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 da. I think that that's an opportunity to pray and say, Lord, prepare me and help me steward a man's heart. When when I if I am able to have a man's heart and you bring that person into my life, help me be able to steward his heart well. Help me help me in my responses so that I'm not hurting his heart and causing him to have to turn cold or you know what I'm saying like I just think that it's an area to be aware and pray not to criticize and condemn I think that we just need to be aware and pray so you see y'all hear this wife talking that's, that's wife talk right there that's wife talk right there I think it's just no I ain't no ain't a believer of well no nah, because a whole lot of believers they girl don't, don't get me started there's a whole lot of believing women that don't know how to be wives yeah I think I think it's just an area to like when we see a common theme in that like yeah. if you see a bunch of men in comments they're not lying yep yeah, <laughs> like they're not lying because I know I have a mouth. I have a mouth. And so I know I could say something that will cut. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why you have to really ask God for the right heart because you because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So sometimes we be saying stuff and be like I was just mad. No, yeah. you, that's what you believed <laughs> that that came out of your mouth. That means you believe that somewhere. That's evidence of something in your heart. So, so we just have to pray. So for basically right you're saying your, your husband could have been one of the men in the comments that said, I agree on this. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm very intentional about my words. So I don't, I know that I know I have hurt him, but I don't think I've hurt him with my words. Like, I don't think I have said some. like, I think the only, the only bad thing, the name calling that I've said to him, I called him a coward. And that was like at towards the end of our marriage. And that was like really heated. But like, I don't think I've ever called so him. So the worst thing he said was coward. You didn't call him or no, like, B, or, no B, A nigga. No, or like <laughs> using like something so vulnerable against them. I yeah. just think that, that I don't like when nobody does yeah. that. And I've had that happen to me. And I hate when people yeah. do that. Like you yeah. share something vulnerable with somebody. And that's somebody. what Shaq was talking about. Yeah. And then they use it. I mean, but but it's not just with men and women. It's with women and women. Of course. It's with friendships. Like girls, you friends with somebody. And then the second y'all fall out, then you go in and telling all of her business to yeah. somebody else. That ain't right. Yeah. And women, men do it with, like men, yeah. men do it too. I think it's a humanity thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just think that we got to be mindful. Oh boy, listen, I could talk to Megan Ashley all day because she's just a wealth of knowledge uh, and I love the growth that you have displayed um, because like I said, don't know what you used to be, amen. <laughs> but 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 what presents itself in front of me right now is the woman that walks in accountability, vulnerability, healing, and intentionality on knowing how to use your words to edify and not destroy. Yeah. So make sure that y'all go to the link in the description and... Um, Follow her on all social media sites and join her Patreon as well as subscribe. Yes. Subscribe to her YouTube channel. Uh, listen, I'm trying to get this. I'm, I'm yeah, almost there. Yeah, because you're almost there. Where, what you at right now? Like almost close to 80. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go and help her get to that 100K. <laughs> 100K by this episode going to drop into March. So yeah, we're going we gonna to get her to 100K. Yay. So listen, make sure y'all go ahead and support. Make it do what it do. That'll be an amazing testimony in just less than a year for her to be able to hit 100K subscribe. 
subscribers. So let's make it happen, Lit Fam. Hey, y'all give it up for my homie, Megan Ashley, y'all. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Man, you've been <laughs> gem dropper. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned to the end for a letter to my future wifey. Been writing these love letters to you. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Lataris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, that episode was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, as I sit down to pen this letter to you, my heart brims with anticipation and gratitude for the woman you are and the journey we will embark on together. 
In the depths of my soul, I know that our union will be anchored in a shared commitment to living for Christ. First and foremost, I want you to know that my love for you will be an extension of my love for our Savior. Just as Christ loves the church, I promise to cherish, honor, and respect you in all circumstances. Together, we will strive to emulate the love of Christ in our marriage, putting each other's needs above our own, and selflessly serving one another. In moments of joy and in times of trial, we will turn to God for guidance and strength, knowing that his grace is more than sufficient to carry us through any storm. Our home will be a sanctuary of love and grace, where forgiveness flows freely and where the light of Christ shines brightly in every corner. We will prioritize prayer, scripture, and fellowship, nurturing our spiritual growth individually and as a couple. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.